This is Lauren Kimball for ANI 150. In the last tutorial, we went ahead and built this low poly version of the axe. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and fence this up and make a high poly out of it. Now, I've probably made mention before in previous tutorials that more commonly you would build a high resolution version of a mesh and then retopologizing it, re it using like topo gun or quadra or or you know retop the tool you know retop tool that now exists in Maya, but um, you know this is just expedient way of doing things when you've got a really simple mesh just to knock out the low poly and then you know then bump it up. So just another way to go about it. So I'm going to go ahead and take this handle <clears throat> and I'm going to call it a handle underscore low, and I'm going to take the axe head itself and I'm going to call it head underscore low. And then I'm going to shift click both of these and I'm going to press uh, control G and you'll see that that creates a group and I'm going to call this axe underscore group or I'm oh, sorry not axe underscore group my bad axe underscore low. <clears throat> I'm then going to duplicate this because this set is going to be the one that I use for actually let me undo that because something I just now realized. Um, I have a layer here for the arm for the handle so I'm going to actually rename this handle layer. <clears throat> I haven't created a, a layer for the head, so I'm going to go ahead and call this head layer. <coughs> so in doing that, when I duplicate the group, they will, the grouped items will already be nestled, in, the duplicates will be nestled in these layers, so I can still use the display layers even if I have the low poly turned off. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this, and I'm going to rename the new group Axe High. So we'll change this to head high and handle high. Okay, this is really important. When you're building a low versus high poly mesh group, you need to make sure that they have the exact same naming conventions. If this is what you name the low poly, this is what you will name the high poly. The only difference being the suffix. It's also why I tend to keep everything in lowercase. That way I don't make a mistake. All right, so I'm going to take the axe low group and I'm just going to turn off its visibility. And so now we're left with this brand new axe high group. And I'm going to start with the head. Now I already thought about this a little bit and toyed around with it before recording this tutorial. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to shift right click and go into edge mode. And I'm going to drag a little marquee box and select this edge as well as the edge on the other side. And yeah. I'm going to basically use my move tool and push this edge over here to this, to the, you know, so that it's favoring this far, the, ah, the, the bottom most corner or edge rather. So the reason I'm doing this is um, I'm going to end up creating an edge loop that fences off the top of the mesh, reinforces this top edge. And if I use this middle edge here, which isn't serving any purpose, purpose, it's just kind of hanging out, I can use it to reinforce the edges along these um, pointy bits, these pointy bits on the other side of the axe, without, you know, having to go crazy adding tons more um, edge loops. Make sure did I get that. Yep, just two. I can double check my, poly my heads up display up here. I'm just going to move this closer. Maybe budge this a little closer. <coughs> oh my goodness, this cough. I'm so, so sorry. All right. And then I'm going to do the same thing here with this top edge. Just kind of push it that way a little bit. Push this one that way a little bit. All right. It's looking pretty good. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to Go into object mode, which remember, just press F8 for that, and shift right click, insert edge loop. Now this time I want to make sure that I have my tool reset, that I don't have my equal multiplier on, and I'm just going to drag a brand new edge that wraps around the opposing side. Ooh, that is really close. I might go in and just change this just a smidgen. So it's not hugging that so tightly, but the rest should be fine. All right, let's go ahead and do that again down here. So grab that insert edge loop tool, click on one of these. If you, if you grab one of the um, vertical edges, it'll create a horizontal edge loop. Bring that down, go over here, 
grab this edge loop here. Make sure you have your, because I'm still in the edge loop tool, press Q to go back to selection, W for move, just kind of pushing that away a little bit. All right, so if I press F8 and go back into object mode and I press three, <coughs> you see that we're starting to make a really nice edge around these, um, these parts that are extruding. It's a good start. Now I want to go ahead and do the same thing with the top of my axe. So I'm going to go ahead and click here and drag an edge loop to the left. Click here and grab an edge loop to the right. And that does a really good job of reinforcing the outer edge of our axe on both sides. You may want to go in here and refine it just a smidgen. So just grab these three edges move it in a little bit, so just not quite so sharp. Great, and let's do the same thing down here. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and press three. I'm liking it, but you'll notice it's kind of mucky down here. So the reason is we need to have another edge loop right about here. And I'm kind of coming down here to look. There we go, something like that. And it's not perfect, but it, it does a pretty decent job. Maybe, maybe a little more distance there, there. Okay, and let's go ahead and just reinforce up here as well, because you know, from our reference, we know that these kind of extrude pretty sharply. So if you press uh, F8 and we get out of um, isolate mode, which would be just control one, we can look at our reference image and it does, it, it comes off at a really sharp angle. So let's go ahead and click on this ax head and press three. And honestly, that's looking really solid. I think that's, that's gonna be just fine. All right, so remember what we've done here, and I'm gonna just delete history, make sure my transformations are frozen. What we've done here is, is not, even though we've added all these extra reinforced edges, it's important to remind you that this by itself does not make a smooth, you know, a nice high poly mesh. Clicking this and pressing three, this does not make a high poly mesh. It is still a low poly mesh. Um, three is just a smooth, preview. It does not make it smooth. It's a preview of the smooth. So if I press one, this is actually what it looks like. If you want this to be as smooth as the preview, you've got to shift right click and you've got to go to smooth and click the box. So I'm just reset my settings and I want to change my division levels to at least two and press smooth. And there we go. Now we have ourselves a nice smooth X head, and that is really how it looks. It's not just the preview. Okay, so there's our high poly. I probably won't delete the history this time, and the reason is because there's only one bit of history here. Well, two. You've got um, whatever display layer it's in, but also this. This is our smooth poly option, and I want to always be able to go back and just enter in zero if I want to come back to this. It's nice to have that option. So I may not delete history again, just leave this as it is. Let's go ahead and take a look at the handle. So I'm press control one to just, you know, press control B. And control B is gonna apply a bevel, which, oh my goodness, no, I don't wanna control B yet. <laughs> I can bevel to everything. I only wanna bevel the edges. Let me shift click uh, this edge loop at the top of my cylinder. And let's go down here and double click and activate the edge loop at the bottom. This cylinder had 20 faces to begin with, which 20 edges plus 20, I should have 40 selected. Looking at my heads up display, 40 edges, good. If you don't have your heads up display, remember it's under windows, or I'm sorry, display, heads up display, poly count. It's a very useful tool, great way to keep an eye on your polygon budget. Um, make sure that uh, you have the right number of edges, face, or vert selected, um, it's wonderful. So with that selected, I'm gonna press Control B to bevel, and that's a much better outcome. And let's see, let's go ahead and add a segment in there. Maybe two? Nah, let's just go with one, maybe two. I don't know, I don't think it matters. 
yeah, so it looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and press F8. And that just kind of takes away some of the sharpness along that, that edge so that we're not dealing with something just so abrupt. Press 3. That's what it's going to look like smooth. That was pretty, pretty freaking easy. I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> delete my history. And, you know, let's go ahead and just smooth it. Double check my, yeah, I don't have to freeze transformations. So make sure my smooth divisions is set to 2. It is. And there we go, we've got our handle. Let's press control one again, and there's our ax. And um, let's go ahead and talk about these coils. I was thinking about it, and they are so, so close to the, bl the blade and the handle that I wonder if we couldn't just bake them onto the low poly without ever putting them on the low poly. And I thought, you know, we could just texture them in substance or sculpt in ZBrush, but I don't think I really want to go into ZBrush for the, such a simple mesh. You know, let's let's do something different. Let, let's use a tool that I've never really utilized much in my... It could just be kind of fun. Let's just see what happens. I'm going to go under Create, Polygon Primitives, and let's throw in a Helix. So a Helix is just, uh, just this random thing that you can that you can play with. It's a geometry, um, a primitive of sorts, and all it is is just a coil. And at the end of the coil is an end gone, so that's one strike against it. But I mean, you could see how this could be used for the for the rope, right? So let's just let's press T, and that's going to activate the preferences of this of this little guy. And let's start with radius. Let's click radius. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought it would do. Okay, so the radius is going to control the thickness. Let's go with point point oh five. It's looking pretty close. Let's go over here. Still a little thick, maybe. 0.02. Yeah, I'm liking that. Okay, let's see what width does. Let's click on width, middle mouse click over here. All right, so let's 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 wrap this little guy around our axe. Yeah, it's pretty close. <coughs> Press T again. Let's actually see what that looks like. Is that is that close on the axe? Yeah, looks like he's a little. A little off. Let's adjust that width again. Let's try point. It's at point six. What about point five five? Yeah, that looks really good. I mean, obviously we can't look at the outside because we haven't squished it in. But ah, huh, the, the the these first parts seem fine. Maybe point five six. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Let's go back over here to this view. Uh, let's play with height. Played with width, let's play with height. Oh, I want it to be like right there though. Okay. Uh, coils. Yay! Oh, that's cool. That's kind of fun. That is kind of fun. Yeah, honestly, that looks really good. I mean, we've got to take it and narrow it in a bit. And then I hate how this is like stopping midway. Let's press control one. I wonder if there's a way I could just select. Delete these, this ring of faces. And then I should be able to press F8, shift right click and separate. Yeah, because this is broken off. I could just delete it. Because if I'm going to have a break in this coil, I don't want it to be in the middle of my ax handle where I'm looking. All right, and control one. <coughs> yeah, I'm digging it. I, we still gotta do something with this. What if we... I don't know, pretend like it's tucking in there. Not super convincing, is it? Let's do a little bit more TLC on this.
pushing this out a little, kind of implying that some of this is underneath. Okay, let's see what that looks like. It's fine. It'll work. So remember that that wasn't actually smoothed. We have to actually go in and smooth the thing. So let's activate the smooth tool. It's got divisions of two. And yeah, we got basically got our high poly. Now we got to go ahead and name this coil something. Oh, let's delete its history. I go. Hopefully it allows me to pull it out of this surface and delete its original group. All right, and let's go ahead and freeze its transformations too. And let's just call this, um, huh. You know, let's, let's combine this to the handle. I think that'll work. Just make it part of the handle. <coughs> and of course, deleting history. We'll delete that extra group. Make sure the handle is still inside the ax head. And there. Now it's all one piece. And then when it bakes out, it will consider that geometry as it's baking into the low poly mesh. Okay? So that's that that's my high poly for the for the axe. Let's go ahead and turn this off. And we're gonna bring back our low poly. And for the next video, we're gonna lay out the UV maps.